Up till now, we've just been building rookie Rookie programs. programs. It's time to learn a few critical tricks to build real-world AI workflows using Autogen. Here's what we're going to try and build. The user will give us a note. We will first generate a summary and optionally generate a title. In other words, we'll perform conditional flow control. But that's still a baby program. Yeah, we're going to top it off with auto reformatting and auto generation of tasks based on that note. The last one is way more complicated than you think it is. Okay, I'll admit it. These are simple problems, but I promise you, the skills we'll be learning are super powerful. Today, we'll be focusing on the Python side of things. I'm assuming you already know a little bit about Autogen. You can check out my previous video for more on that. Also, if you want a video on how I integrated all of this in a front end, just drop a comment. Let's start with the first use case. Generate a summary followed by a conditional title. At first glance, this might seem like a problem where we don't need Autogen at all. That's kind of true. But Autogen's real power comes from its ability to make agents talk and build on top of each other. So if the user wants to create a summary and a title, we can have the first agent create a summary and let the second agent use that to create a title which is in line with the summary. This makes our text generation way more cohesive. More importantly, I just love Autogen. I don't need a reason to use it. Heck, I'm using Autogen just for the made with Autogen stamp. I said it. We'll start off by creating two agents. The first one is the summarizer. It's nothing fancy. I have a system prompt here. And yeah, I definitely did not take two hours to come up with that prompt. That's pretty much all we need to set up the summarization agent. The title generation agent is very similar with just a different system message. Our user proxy agent is pretty standard as well. Just note that I've set the default auto reply to none. That's important. Setting this to none makes sure that the conversation ends whenever the user agent is sent a message. Details. Time to stitch it all up. We'll start by setting up some flags. We're going to use flags to pick up what node we're supposed to work with and whether or not we're supposed to generate a title. Next, we read the node and make the base LLM config object. This config is pointing to a local model I'm running using my own custom server. It does nothing fancy. It's just an OpenAI compatible endpoint on top of Llama C++. I'll drop a link for setting all of this up in the description below. I'm using the Mistral Open Hermes fine tune for anyone who's interested. Next, we set up a group chat. In the last video, we saw how the default group chat works. It essentially takes an instruction from the user. It will then use AI to decide which agent needs to run next. In our case, it could be the summarizer. Then the AI might decide to let the title generator do its thing. This isn't going to work for us. We need to take things in our own hands. And we do that by creating our own group chat by extending the existing one. Bam. The first thing to notice is my custom constructor. We can take in whatever arguments we want. For example, I'm taking in a boolean to see if we need to generate a title or not. We then need to call the constructor of our parent. Don't forget to do that. Bad things will happen. I know what you're thinking. No. Trust me, you don't want to know. Next thing is overriding the select speaker method of the parent class. This is where we decide who the next agent should be on every turn. As you can see, if I get a message from the admin, I'll pass it over to the summarizer. Once the summarizer gets done, and if he was supposed to generate a title, we'll pass it to the next agent. Otherwise, we'll just give it back to the admin. That's Autogen's flow control in action. You don't have to worry about handling the conversation history or the models or any of that crap. Just mention who's supposed to go next and that's it. Hey there, it's a tech buff from the future. Really, that Mewtwo was not there before. But you probably did not notice it now, did you? Mm, Okay, so the video you're watching was recorded a really long time ago and Autogen has added a lot of functionality and some really good documentation since then. For example, you can now perform speaker selection without extending the base class. It's just a parameter you can pass now. And yeah, I've already updated my GitHub repo with the latest code. 
Having said that, what you just saw is still relevant, especially if you want to do something a little bit more complex, like what Past Me is about to show you. So over to you, guy with the weird dressing sense. And you're just scratching the surface. Origin is giving us way more control here than you think. For example, I could simply create all my agents in the constructor itself, making this group chat self-sufficient. I could also check if any of my previous agents reported an error, so I can forward it to a troubleshooter if need be. Or we can interact with third-party systems to let them know about our progress. The possibilities are endless. This is literally all you need to make kick-ass multi-agent workflows. Okay, now if you think this is insane, the next trick is going to blow your mind. Before we move on, do hit like and smash that subscribe button. It takes me weeks to dig through all of this code and make a video for you guys. All I ask for is some love. For my editor as well. Just a little bit for him though, because he barely does anything. Time to move on to the next use case. We want to reformat our node to look a teeny bit better and we want to identify a list of tasks for the user based on that note. Here's how we're going to go about it. We first generate a list of topics the note covers. We'll use this list to reformat the note. Makes sense, right? We'll also use this list to generate our tasks. This list of topic is what drives everything. It sets up the sections for the reformatted note. It also becomes the level of granularity we want our tasks to have. But there's one problem. These agents only care about the response of the topic analyzer. We want a way to prevent responses from these agents to be added to the conversation history or it will mess everything up. In other words, we have already taken control of the workflow. Now it's time to take control of the conversation history itself. Let's look at the code. I've gone ahead and made all of our agents. We've got our user proxy agent, the topic analyzer, the paraphraser, and the task creator. I'm not gonna bore you with all the details. All the code is already there on GitHub. Visit the repo for more details. Obviously, we have our custom group chat, but we also have a custom group chat manager. Let's start with the custom group chat first. Since you already know about the select speaker override, I'm gonna skip that one. I'm simply calling each agent in sequence. Time to introduce a new override, the append method. This is a method responsible for adding messages to the conversation history. We simply override it to not add messages from our blacklisted agents. This way, they will not interfere with each other. Unfortunately, this is not enough. We'll have to override the group chat manager with one last chain. Here's the code. We have a pretty straightforward constructor. We can skip that. This run chat method is where the real magic happens. What you see here is the original code written in the origin library with a few minor tweaks that I've made. It essentially starts with a loop. It then forwards each message to the group chat to add them to the conversation history. By default, it also sends a copy of the message to each agent so they can maintain their own conversation history. I have no idea why it does that. Uh, we don't really need it, so we can comment that code out. However, I do want to send a copy of the message to the user agent. So we'll add that back in. Next, we let the group chat select a speaker and generate a reply. I have modified this line to use the conversation history from our group chat. This way, we can keep control of what agent sees what conversations. Very powerful if you ask me. Finally, we send that message to ourselves so we can keep the conversation going. Back to our main code, we have made an instance of our custom group chat and group chat manager and initiated the chat. Also, before I forget, since we're sending each message back to the user agent, we can use the agent to access all the messages. In this case, we simply list the number of tasks the agent thinks I need to do. AI has started giving me work already. Good times! Before you go, I haven't really used Origin in the app I showed earlier. I used this instead. Low code AI. Coming soon. On that happy note, let's run the program to see if it works. That's our topics right there. Our paraphrased output. Wait, did it just do a quick spell check for me? Oh, and finally, we have our tasks. Cool. Like, share, and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful. And don't forget, I am your tech boy here on YouTube and hopefully in real life.